Hello and welcome to another episode of Tom Air. Today's mission is an exciting one because it has us flying to the gig again. So we're going to use the airplane, Romeo Bravo Romeo, to fly to some work that we have up north of Toronto. Uh, so today we're going to be flying to Toronto first to pick up Mark, who works for me. Then we're going to be heading up to Muskoka Airport, which is uh, north of Toronto, about two and a half hours north of Toronto, if you had to drive. We're not driving, thankfully. Um, and up there we've got some work for a real estate client of ours. They're a developer. They're developing a large and exceptional island property in the Muskoka region of Ontario. So if you haven't been to Muskoka before, Muskoka is north of, of Toronto. It's, it's famous cottage country. So it's really well known for its uh, crystal clear lakes, uh, boating, water sports in the summer, lots of fun stuff in the winter, ice fishing, snowshoeing, that kind of thing in the winter. There's cottages everywhere. People have been going to cottage up there for uh, like centuries almost, hundreds of years, people have been going up there to enjoy the beautiful crystal clear lakes and the stunning scenery. Um, so anyway, we've got a client with my company Drone Boy. Uh, so we've been doing some, some work for them over the past six months or so. Uh, they're a developer, like I said, and they're developing this exceptional island property. So the stuff we're doing today is the enterprise division of the work we do at Drone Boy. So, uh, we're going to be doing 3D mapping and LiDAR capture of the island. So we're going to be flying it with our enterprise drones, our bigger drones that have uh, a series of sensors on them that either capture LiDAR or capture a whole bunch of, of high resolution photographs that we put together into 3D ortho mosaics. The LiDAR is really interesting. Basically it sends out lasers, if you will, um, to scan the island and it, and it scans the entire island, looks right through the trees and we can see the ground below the trees. So we can give our client uh, ground surface models, topo maps, um, scale accurate down to five centimeter accuracy of, of what we're seeing down on the earth below. So it'll enable them to, the builders, the architects, the survey teams, to do their jobs a lot easier, get a lot more information about the island, where they're going to put the, the potential cottages in the future, how they're going to do it, where they're going to put the docks, where they're going to put the septic systems, all of that stuff. They're going to have scale accurate down to five centimeter accuracy and below um, maps, contour maps of the entire island. So that's a very valuable tool for them. Um, and it's really easy to do with a drone. We basically send a drone up, you know, half a day later, a bunch of flights later, feed it all into a computer and we get these incredibly detailed maps that show us the island just in 3D scale app accurate renditions and it's absolutely amazing to see these things and it's so valuable for for the development team down the road doing what they're doing so that's what we're doing today uh, we've been working on this project for the last six months we've been going back and forth to Muskoka a whole bunch of times like I said Muskoka's about two and a half no hours north of Toronto. It's three and a half hour drive from the Drone Boy office um, to where we're, where we're going today, to the site where we launched the drone from. It's a brutal drive. Um, you gotta drive right through the GTA, Greater Toronto area. The traffic's terrible in Toronto, um, like I've said before. So it's great that we have the airplane. Today I'll be flying the airplane up there, saving some time, folding space. Um, making my day a little easier. So we only have a couple hours work to do up there. I would have spent seven hours driving to get there. So uh, that is awesome. It's an awesome use for the airplane flying to the gig. So yeah, like I said, flying to Toronto, Buttonville Airport, picking up Mark. Then we're heading on up to Muskoka and our buddy Nick's gonna be picking us up in Muskoka. He'll take us to the property. So it's always good to have a, a man on the ground, if you will, who can pick you up. There's no rental cars available in Muskoka. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. It's gonna be a fantastic day. Really looking forward to it. The sun's just coming up. It's a little chilly. Uh, it's minus five degrees here, minus five Celsius here. So uh, a little chilly, might have to put on some gloves. But um, yeah, it looks like a great flying day. Really looking forward to this one. And uh, yeah, let's go. Preferred uh, traffic, Skymaster Golf Romeo Bravo Romeo is on the roll, 05. Toronto Center, Charlie Golf Romeo Bravo Romeo. Uh, Bravo Juliet Romeo, Toronto. Uh, it's Romeo Bravo Romeo, just uh, departed Brantford VFR, climbing, uh, just did, climbing to 2,000 feet, heading to uh, Buttonville, looking for flight following. And Fox Romeo Bravo Romeo, squad code 4342. And it's uh, Charlie Golf, Romeo, Bravo, Romeo. I know it's a mouthful. Charlie Golf, Romeo, Bravo, Romeo, Charlie Golf, Romeo, Bravo, Romeo. Uh, Charlie Golf, Rome
Okay, Romeo, Reverend Romeo, we've got you to call us. Squad code 4342. That's 4342 for uh, Golf Romeo Bravo Romeo. Romeo Bravo, Romeo City Council, there's 3045, clear to the zone north of the CN Tower. Uh, clear to the zone north of the tower, 3045, Romeo Bravo, Romeo. Romeo Bravo, Romeo, what's the aircraft type last minute departure, and are you landing in Buttonville? Uh, we're assessing the Skymaster, departed Brentford, and we are landing in Buttonville. Buttonville traffic, Skymaster, Charlie Golf, Romeo Bravo, Romeo is turning uh, final, full stop, 15, Buttonville. How you doing? It'd be great if there's zero traffic in here. I'm just picking uh, picking him up. Yeah. Just throw that stuff on the top of the pile. Yeah. Mark's here. It's your first time in the plane. Yeah, in this it plane. Is. Took when long it enough. Went with you when we kicked the tires. You were there when I bought it. Well, no, it was. Well, still you were there when I went. To, yeah, right. You were yeah. there when I went to look at this airplane before he I even bought play, it. Because uh, tried to play hard to get. Yeah. So I haven't heard anybody. Nobody around. Buttonville traffic, Skymaster Charlie Golf, Romeo Bravo, Romeo lining up runway 33 for departure to the uh, north, climbing 5,500 feet. Paul always taught me to use as much of the runway as possible, so we'll go down here. And the winds from the east, low wind correction. Uh, en engines are good, airspeed's alive. Positive rate. Here is going up. Definite weather improvement over Saturday. Romeo, yeah. Bravo, Romeo, identify 2,400 altimeter 3044 altitude 5,000 or below approved. Uh, 3044 altitude 5,000 or below for Romeo, Bravo, Romeo. All right, we'll climb to 5,000. Criminal dashboard uh, 237-1900, climbing 3,000. So here we go on our way to Muskoka for a day of of mapping fun, mapping. Drone mapping goodness on Lake of Bays in Muskoka, mapping a fantastic island property. So Mark here, he, uh, he's been working for me for a while, he's, but uh, there's a lot of things I don't necessarily know that well about him. I mean, I know he was a, a skydiver, I know he sort of used to be in the military, he's always telling me these kind of random crazy stories, so now he's just telling me well, he's telling me first, the next plane I need to get is a plane with a jump door, so you can jump out of it. So that sounds pretty awesome. And then he's telling me the highest, what was it, the highest skydive jump you ever did was? 28,000. 28,000 feet? 28,000 from uh, Twin Otter. That was in uh, Florida. Wow. So it must have been a little chilly up there. Uh, quite chilly. So it was minus, minus 28. Yeah. And you'd have to breathe oxygen to do a jump like that, I'm assuming. Yeah, so O2 all the way up, uh, we get saturated, uh, and then exit without. Crazy. So that's just it. You get in an airplane, you find out all kinds of new things about a person that you've known for a long time. Like, like he's crazy, basically. You find out that he's crazy. Well, that's, uh, Florida was also where I did uh, night jumps on New Year's Eve. And you're exiting the plane one year and landing in a different year. Oh, so you do a whole, so you get to log a whole year? Yeah, and then you can see fireworks at Disneyland, Tampa, all the major centers that are around there here in Zephyr Hills. Wow, awesome. So yeah, like I said earlier, today we're commuting to Muskoka, Muskoka and Nick's going to pick us up at the airport, and then we're going to go do some, some drone LiDAR mapping. Tell us what, tell us what LiDAR is, 
because I've been in 3D mapping, so I've been doing a crap job of it. Mark's the technical. I'm the big picture in Drone Boy, DB Industrial. Um, Mark here is like he's really into like the nuts and bolts of the the technology. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about drone lidar and uh, 3D mapping and what we're going to be up to today. Yeah, so we're going to go up. We're going to set uh, a GPS base station so that we can get a accurate measurement uh, that will correct the data from the drone. So once we do the LiDAR flight, it's going to go up, it's going to shoot a bunch of lasers to the ground, and how long it takes those returns to come back, it's able to measure the distance and height of all the objects that it sees. So it's going to fly a bunch of tracks, it's going to give us a bunch of returns, and then one of the benefits that we get out of LiDAR over photogrammetry is we're able to see the ground points where the laser hits. So we can actually strip out all the vegetation, houses, all the all the stuff that uh, isn't ground, and we're able to give a very accurate picture of the ground so that they can do contours. You can see where water potentially will flow at different elevations so that whether you need to cut or build, depending if it's a construction site. So it gives us a lot more data that you can't see it do uh, because photogrammetry can't see into those shadows can't see the ground beyond the trees because of the cover, but you only need a few laser points and because the LiDAR is putting out hundreds of thousands of these points, it's able to get enough returns to build that model. So we're flying a drone that shoots lasers. That's the big picture. Last call, see again. Uh, it's Charlie Golf, Romeo, Bravo, Romeo with you. Golf, Romeo, Bravo, Romeo, can you radio? Uh, we're currently uh, 17 miles to the south of uh, Muskoka Airport, inbound uh, for landing, and we're planning to join a straight-in left downwind 18, full stop. Romeo, Bravo, Romeo, Roger. What is your ETA? Our ETA is seven, uh, seven and a half minutes. Uh, Roger, runway 18. I'll report to entering the zone from the south. We'll report entering the zone from the south. Romeo, Bravo, Romeo. Simmons Radio, Fox Shot Sierra, Echo Victor, is entering the zone now from the south, 3,300. Echo Victor, Roger, report turning final, runway 18. Turning final, 18, Fox Shot Sierra, Echo Victor. Uh, fields in sight. So, starting our descent into Muskoka, one of our favorite airports to the north of Toronto. Mainly, well, we fly in and out of here a lot. We tend to do a lot of work up here, a lot of business. We had a lot of friends up here. It's a great country, so we like coming up here to do fun stuff too, like hang out on lakes, go fishing, go, you know, I go winter camping up here, believe it or not, in the winter even. Um, all kinds of fun stuff like that. Today we're going to work. Um, and the other nice thing about Muskoka Airport is Muskoka Airport is the base of some really good friends of ours, Lake Central Air Services. Lake Central Air Services, we've done some video work for them before. They're a very, uh, they're an aircraft maintenance organization, but they're also a custom fabricator for really interesting aircraft stuff. They do a lot of work in the, kind of similar to what we're doing with the drones today. We're doing LiDAR, photogrammetry, we're capturing data. They do a lot of work with uh, converting all types of aircraft to uh, be sensor ships. Not sensor ship, like you're not allowed to do something, not allowed to talk about something, but sensor ship, like, <laughs> you get that? Sensor ships um, in the sense that uh, airplanes and helicopters with various sensor plat there's various sensor platforms. Um, so yeah, a lot of magnetometer work, conversions, um, a lot of, they do actually probably LiDAR conversions too for airplanes, so real big boy stuff. And uh, we did a video for them. We got to know them quite well. They've done some work on uh, my aircraft here and uh, they're great people. So we're gonna be parking there today. It's always good to have an airport where you know uh, some people there, a place where you can park, where you don't have to pay for parking. Um, not that I mind paying for parking sometimes, but it's always nice when you can you know, park at your friend's house, which is what we're doing with the airplane today. See some friends of ours, have a little chat. Um, the other thing that Lake Central's famous for is doing maintenance and, and training on uh, the Lake Buccaneer aircraft, which you remember from episode one and two, Paul and I fly in the lake across Canada and back again with the forced landing. I've spent quite a bit of time in a lake. I, I'm not certified on a lake yet, but I hope to be one day. So Lake Central up here in Muskoka, they do 
uh, they specialize in the lake aircraft. It's kind of a unique, unique thing for them to be into. They've got a real niche thing going on there, and they're they know everything about it. They buy them, they sell them, they they refurbish them, they they do maintenance on them, and they know probably more than any AMO, certainly in Canada, if not North America, about about lake aircraft. So if you're into those kind of if you're into lakes, check out Lake Central Air Services, and uh, if you're into the, Converting airplanes to to photo to uh, sensor ships for for like lidar and, and magnetometer and all kinds of interesting things like that. Give them a call for that as well. So there you go. There's my plug for Lake Central for today. Timmins Radio, Charlie Golf, Romeo Bravo. Romeo is uh, turning final for uh, full stop. Uh, Timmins or uh, Muskoka. Romeo Bravo, Romeo Roger, report down. We'll report down, uh, Romeo, Bravo, Romeo. White your light, so we got four white lights, a little high, correcting. Dumps, gas, undercarriage, mixture, props. Timmons Radio, Switches Foxtrot, and security, is on Bravo. Land. We're Morning. gonna taxi Bravo, Charlie, Alpha, and hold short of 18. Knots over the fence. Fox Sierra, Sierra, Kazakir, Timmons Radio, say again. First taxi, eight, Bravo, Charlie, Alpha, and holding short of 18 on Alpha. Sierra, Victor, Roger, Romeo, 18, what are your intentions? Southbound departure, 6,500 uh, for Stratford, Fox Rats, Sierra, Victor. Victor, uh, Roger, traffic short final now, runway 18 is the uh, Sky Master, request you ultra. Don't touch the aircraft right here. Uh, Timmins Radio, Golf Romeo, Bravo, Romeo is uh, down 18, we're just backtracking to Bravo. Romeo, Bravo, Romeo, Roger, report off the runway. We'll report clear, Romeo, Bravo, Romeo. Alright, here we are at our awesome friends, Lake Central. Air Services in Muskoka. Let's go meet up with our friend Nick. Caravan, that's a skydiving plane. Yeah, jumped out of a couple of those. Got the Aerostar. Hey Jim. You good? good man, how are you? Good. We were just talking all about Lake Central on our flight in. And here's the man, Jim Hodgson. So yeah, like I said, they specialize in Lake yeah, Buccaneers. I think, uh, I think he's just through that door, actually. Yeah? Cool. I'll unlock Thanks. The awesome. Thanks. I'll come and uh, say bye before we go. So yeah, lots of lakes. Lake Buccaneer, Lake Buccaneer, Lake Buccaneer's parked outside. These guys specialize in lake aircraft. All right, let's pull everything out. setting up our uh, ground station here so this base station is going to record all the satellite data so that we can sync it up with the drone and get real accurate data where it flew last time we were up here we let this sit all day and then we sent it off the Canadian government runs a service that will give us a precise point so we're able to set it up it'll sit for the day we send some of that data off to the government they're able to do a whole bunch of calculations uh, make up for conditions in the sky, that atmosphere uh, delays and other stuff, and give us down to a sub-centimeter accurate point. When you're walking around with your cell phone, it's accurate to a 25-foot circle. Well, this, because we want to get accurate measurements that can actually be used for building and all the different things that we want, that's why we're setting it up in the same place and getting that sub-centimeter accuracy so that we can get some good data. I have to say, this is not a bad, bad office for today. 
out here on this fine November 20th fall day up here in Muskoka. Could... Days above zero in November this late? Yeah, it's true. We're doing well with the weather. They say it's supposed to snow tomorrow. So this is the M350 RTK. Uh, this is the latest of the industrial drones. Uh, we can fly different types of payloads on this from thermal to LiDAR, also a high resolution camera. And we can also run dual payloads. There's a mount that we can put on so we can run cameras side by side. Or if we're doing inspections underneath a bridge, uh, we can actually mount the camera on the very top. Handy. And it kind of looks like a spaceship. Drone's good, area's clear. Drone going up. Going up. Four for four, clear to launch. All right, send her. Send it. Okay, send a mission. So the drone appears to be flying all by itself. What's going on there, Mark? So we have a pre-programmed mission. Uh, once you set the parameters on the uh, area and the size that you want to fly, uh, the program picks the best uh, flight pattern in um, way to get there. So we can modify some of those things if we need, if we think it's best for uh, depending on instructions or area that we're allowed to fly. And then once it takes off, it will perform its mission. And there it goes. Yeah. And watch out for air traffic. Keep an eye on that thing, listen for air traffic, watch for air traffic, see and be seen. We don't want to bump into any airplanes because sometimes we are the airplane. That's right. And we still have, uh, you know, pretty sizable lake here that has a lot of uh, water flights that come in in the summer. So you never know, even though that there's no ice, that it's still a possibility. No, correct. You got to watch for air traffic all the time. Um, the summer when we were working up here, there's a local guy that owns a little float plane, a little yellow. I think it's like a, a convert. I think it's a, a Piper Cub uh, on floats. And he was flying real low over the island, and we had to pay very close attention to Arrived where he was. Point. Ooh, there she's at the start Starting point. Task. Oh, right on the money. Nice landing. It was almost as smooth as my landing in Muskoka that you, oh. didn't, that you didn't comment on. That's because way. it was expected. Well, but still, when you have a good landing, you want to tell the pilot good landing, like I just did for you, so you can feel good about it. I'll keep that in mind for next time. Do that. All right, so that was a good day. We got some, uh, got some LiDAR capture in. We did the island again. Um, how do you feel about it? feels really good. It's going to be giving us some uh, good data, be able to allow them to use that uh, ground and contour so they can build some models to show what kind of view and where the houses are going to go. Yeah, maybe we should buy one of those cars. It's a nice place. I'd definitely uh, like living up here. That's a few million dollars? Uh, not quite yet. 649 is still uh, an option. Oh, well. All right, well, let's put it all away and get back in the airplane and head home. All right.